Welcome back everybody. I'm Rachel. This is Into the Veil. And we are at an old ghost town that we thought we'd share with you here in Arkansas. In what was the town of Rush. And it was built approximately 1880. Um, and flourished until about 1920. They mined for zinc. They had hoped for silver did not find it and there are still remnants of the town here so we're gonna walk around and show you a little of that and see what happens they've reported activity periodically don't know what we will or won't get today but let's go So we're coming up on the smelter where they tested for silver and smelted the zinc. And we're going to walk up there. It's gorgeous. not a lot left of this old place and they have barricaded off a lot of the houses that you'll see so that people can't go into them apparently they were having a problem with with that people taking souvenirs and yeah. writing their names on stuff and which is always a shame And we've got Rocket with us today, so he's kind of excited to be here. He's smelling some things that... Yeah, we're actually seeing signs of the people up here, which doesn't surprise me. It is the Ozarks. So we're keeping our eye out on all ends between the, the people and hates and all kinds of good stuff. Well, we had a place very similar to this in North Carolina that we'd go to all the time mm -hmm. out in the Uari National Forest between El Dorado and Ophir, a place called Low Water Bridge. Did a lot of gold prospecting and all of that, and this is very, very similar to it. Yeah, a little bit shorter, but still, it's kind of like deja vu. The water gets high enough you can't you're not going to pass it beautiful spots to find because this is where a lot of the old mills and mines and different things would sit often and they're getting harder and harder to find If you can take him for a second mm -hmm. so I can work the camera. There you go. A lot of hard living happening here. And this would have been right about... Uh, 
Well, up in this part of the country, you know, moonshine and all that was a popular thing. And people, a lot of people worked very hard to make it. Well, this one must have been a store, store of some type. Mm -hmm. It's got a storefront on it. That thing about mining, long hard hours running on hope, doing nothing but digging your own grave. You get lucky and most don't. The ghost town of Rush stands as a mute testimony to the activities of a bygone era. Zinc carbonate ore discovered in the valley in the late 1880s and the rush was on. Soon the hillsides were dotted with mines sprouting colorful names such as Morning Star, White Eagle, Monte Cristo, Red Cloud, Beulah, McIntosh, Edith, and Yellow Rose. The population of the valley rose and fell with the demands of the zinc market. The peak came during the period 1914 to 1917 when more than 5,000 people were said to have lived and worked here. At the end of World War I, the bottom fell out of the zinc market and the mines were abandoned. These buildings date from 1900s and were inhabited until the 1960s. this down in here reminds me of being a kid traveling with my old man years and years ago to his old home place in eastern Kentucky. It's gorgeous. This kind of terrain gets in your blood. I guess it's literally in your blood. <laughs> So there's some houses here. Let's look. All things considered, that one's still in pretty good shape. Yeah, it looks like what they built, they built fairly well. And a lot of them would have a hole underneath the house, a place where they'd keep potatoes and stuff, a cold hole, mm -hmm. like a makeshift root cellar of sorts, keep their milk and things like that in the creek in a crock, keep it cold. And most of the year up here it stayed cool enough that with with a hole they probably could keep a lot. Well, do you feel like hiking up the mountains of the other area? If you guys come up here, be prepared to hike. If you can't hike, it's going to be a limited trip. A lot of, a lot of structures up and in the hills, and great exercise, beautiful view, a lot of work. <laughs> Or what's hiding up here?
Alright. So, catch my breath here. So, the old Morning Star Mill smokestack here. And this was from, looks like 19, until 1931. And by the 1960s, it was pretty much vacant. I don't know how big the actual mills in that were. Sure. Looking at the foundation and support stones, it was a fairly large building. Looks long, maybe narrow. There's a path on that side. section of it back through here. Looks like we're standing on tailings. Mm -hmm. Sure does. It's a shame they didn't find silver. They probably would have been in operation much longer. All over oh. the country are Places that are dotted with different types of mines, you know, and not sure how they broke it down, but that is reminiscent to me of a leach pit mm -hmm. where they would leach minerals out. Okay, looks like it might have run down. Not sure. There's a lot of natural springs. We were noticing one between the general store and the house next to it. So I don't know if seasonally they had natural water that might have helped them. Like a dogwood. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So we found this. The mill did go rectangularly right here in front of us. And where Ken thought that those were tailings. They called it a chat pile, but basically it's waste rock or tailings. There was a huge tailings pile. Across the road there. Uh-huh, across the road. All the mines are further up from where we are. And then there, it looks like there was a storage hopper between the mines and the mill. But yeah, pretty good size operation for up here in some better pictures. Two hundred tons of ore a day. Wow. So the guys look like they worked, according to this, ten hour days, five to six days a week. For twenty to thirty five cents an hour, depending on their position. Hard workers. I suspect most of the small towns that we met on the way into this place were all founded on this particular um, operation or type of operation and all the different mines that were in the area. And probably where they migrated back out to after this shut down. Even back then, if they didn't have a lot of medical care or a lot of things close by, they probably did suffer a lot of losses. 
maybe children, you mm -hmm. know. A lot of kids work in mines too. <laughs> this one, in fact, I just glanced and says my daddy was almost killed in the mines. A lot of cave-ins, it looks like. Tough stuff. See what we have here. Company store and office set. Here. That other one earlier looked like a storefront too. Yeah, and I'm thinking though that it was more of a do I want to say general store? Okay, let's see. You know the way they work though, I'm feeling it, like it sounds like mm -hmm. there was several little small mine companies here at the same time so this may have been for one and the other one was for a different outfit so i think the foundation that we're seeing here was the actual that one store mm -hmm. and what's remaining on this side possibly was the office just looking at the size of them in the picture and the proximity to each other I don't know why it always makes me so sad to see history just in ruins, but it's me. I think about all of the... You can almost feel when you get to places like this, if you've ever had the opportunity, you might agree that you can almost feel the activity or feel, you know, the sense of them going back and forth and kind of hollering at each other and maybe not fighting, but... Or maybe... <laughs> This was their family. This was their... Uh, if they were lucky enough to have a partner and children, but a lot of them didn't. Yeah, for a lot of them, it was everything for the time that they were here. Yeah. But for the most part, it looks like what they built, they built well. They come up here and work for 25 or 35 cents an hour. Or go walk behind a mule in the field all day for 25 cents a day. Right. That's the way mining was and is. It's just a way of life for a lot of people. Some of them might leave their families for a time and send money home. Or the foundations we showed were part of the store. This was the blacksmith shop. Okay. That's what that building is, was the blacksmith and farrier and all of that. Boy, I sure wouldn't have thought that that foundation up there was big enough for both of There's those. There's probably There's one behind, yeah. Well, looking at it here now, there's the square foundation up there, and then there's the remnants of another one right here, so they sit side by side facing the blacksmith shop. Yeah. The picture must have been taken this way. Yeah. Well, it makes sense they'd all be together. One-stop shop. <laughs>
Okay, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're going to leave it with you there. Again, that's Rush, Arkansas. If you happen to want some place to explore that's a ghost town. Not a lot to see, but what is here is absolutely beautiful. And um, it is a hike. So bear that in mind if you have any challenges with that. Thank you. And I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.